In today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 productive ways that you can improve your finances while you're at home quarantined. If you're like most people, you probably have a lot of extra time on your hands right now. So I just wanted to give you 10 ways that you can really make use of that extra time to improve your financial situation. And hopefully even just one of these resonates with you and you can start doing it this week. And if it's your first time, hi, my name is Erica. I'm a lawyer and my passion is personal finance. So every Tuesday on this channel, I have a new video about personal finance. So if you're interested in that kind of content, please do subscribe and hit the thumbs up for me. Diving right in, the first thing that you can do to be productive with your time is to print out the last 30 days of your expenses. Now, I don't wanna call it a budget because I know people are going to shy away from that, but just print out the last 30 days of your expenses and then grab three markers. So what you're going to do with this little activity, this arts and crafts, is the first color, you're going to highlight all of the expenses that were absolutely necessary to your survival. Rent, utilities. The second color, you're going to highlight things that weren't necessarily necessary, but they brought you a lot of joy. So if that's the book that you purchased or the one nice date night meal that you had out. And the third color is for things that weren't necessary and you also didn't derive a lot of value from them. Maybe you were purchasing those things out of habit or out of trying to impress someone. Highlight those in that third color. Doing that exercise is going to be really important to see what you're actually spending on because most people don't know that. And color coding all of your expenses like that will allow you to see which expenses aren't really important to you and could actually be cut out of your budget if you needed to save more money. Which leads me to my second point, which is to create a plan to build an emergency fund. If you're not familiar with the term emergency fund, an emergency fund is essentially assets, ideally cash, that you have set aside for financial scenarios that are less than ideal, emergency situations like job loss or medical expenses that are unexpected. It's so that if that worst case scenario plays out, you have that emergency fund to fall back on to get you back up on your feet. And most experts recommend three to six months worth of expenses as your emergency fund. I was featured in Business Insider last week, woo actually talking about emergency funds. And the two main points I wanted to get across are one, we are in very uncertain economic times right now. Two, the single best way that you can protect yourself from these worst case scenarios like job loss is to have an emergency fund. So whether you already have one and need to build upon it, or if you don't even have one and need to start from the beginning, now is really the time to get started. Use this time that you're at home, that you have extra time to create an action plan for how you're going to build that emergency fund. Going back to what we were doing with color coding your expenses, take those expenses that you identified as not necessary and that don't necessarily enhance your life and cut those out. Use those savings to start to build up your emergency fund because I really believe that getting rid of those temporary gratifications is going to be so important so that you can build up the stability and this peace of mind with having this emergency fund. Number three is to learn a new skill. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I've been learning many new skills. I've learned how to do YouTube and talk to a camera and learn about lighting and something about it is just so satisfying. So whatever you've been curious about, you can learn basically anything on YouTube these days. So if you want to learn how to copyright or edit YouTube videos or build a bench from scratch, you'll find it on YouTube for free. So take this extra time that you have to learn a new skill. And it doesn't necessarily have to correlate to a skill that will earn you more money immediately. Just do something that's fun and that you've been curious about. Number four, use this time at home to read a personal finance book. It is going to improve your financial literacy. It's going to give you actionable ways to improve your finances. These are some of the books that I recommend. And just to show that I'm practicing what I'm preaching, this is the book that I'm currently reading. I borrowed it from a friend and it is 584 pages, but hopefully I'll be done with this soon and can give you guys a report of what I learned from it. Number five is to take this time to set financial goals. Set them for yourself first and foremost, but if you have a spouse or partner, 
Take the time to sit down and review your finances and set financial goals with your spouse or partner as well. I am a huge believer that setting financial goals really enables you to reach that goal much faster than if you are just aimlessly going about your finances in your daily life without any set goal in mind. When I was drowning in $200,000 of student debt, I set a goal that I wanted to pay it off by this date. And that's what really kept me motivated and focused on the finish line. This year, I have this crazy goal that I want to create $200,000 of passive income by December 31st. And that's keeping me motivated to focus on that. So take this extra time that you have to sit down and set goals for yourself. Set these financial goals. Do you have a passive income goal too? Maybe you want to create another income stream, a side hustle, and you have a goal for how much you want to create with that side hustle this year. Or do you have debt? Let's set a goal for when exactly you're going to have that debt paid off because I promise you, using this time to set goals, set these financial goals, is going to be a very wise and productive use of your time because I really do think, just from personal experience, that it'll help you to get to that goal, that finish line, much quicker. Number six is take this extra time to get organized. Organization is really essential to taking control of your finances. And to show you this, I'll just walk you through some examples. So this is actually how I keep track of all of my medical receipts. So I organize them by year, by month, and then I just have them in chronological order. This is how I do my pay stubs too for work. As you can see, I love folders. I love having everything so organized that if I ever need anything for my finances, I know exactly where I can find it. I also love Excel sheets. So if you look at this Excel sheet, this is actually what I used when I was paying off my student loans. I know every single loan payment that I made to the penny because I kept track of it for two years, every single payment. And I also use this for my budget. You can actually download the free budget tracker that I use by clicking the link below. But this is how I track my budget too. I know the category, I know what payment method I used, all of this information. I just love being organized about it because I feel like it helps me to stay on top of my finances. And now is the best time to take this extra time to get on top of your finances, take control of them, and just get organized so that you always know where to find this information. Number seven is to diversify your income streams. Add that additional source of income. If you've watched me, you know that my goal is to build $200,000 of passive income, but that's entirely online. There are so many ways that you can make money legitimately online these days. And whether you've been wanting to start a podcast or a blog or a YouTube channel or an online course to show off whatever your skill set is, this is the time to start. Online businesses, I truly believe, are going to continue to grow from here. And if you've been wanting to pursue that and pursue that additional income stream online, now is the chance. You have this extra time at home, so use it productively to launch whatever you've been wanting to start. The biggest thing I'll say here is if that additional income stream does involve this level of putting yourself out there and getting out of your comfort zone, just go for it. Speaking from experience, I was terrified of going on YouTube four months ago, but the more you do it, the more you put yourself out there and get out of your comfort zone, the easier it'll get. So whatever it is that you want to do, just start today. You're in quarantine, you have no excuses. Number eight is to handle that one financial thing that you've been putting off. I don't know what it is for you, it could be getting all the various 401ks that you have from different companies sorted out, or getting your taxes figured out. I'm not sure, but I'm sure when I say this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about for your situation. For me, I know I've been very bad the last month or so about submitting my receipts to my insurance for reimbursement, so that's what I have to get on. Number nine, so this is a little game I have for you. I have a list of 18 questions financial questions that if you don't know the answer to, I want you to pick just one that you're going to figure out the answer to. I came up with these 18 questions because for the most part, these are questions where I distinctly remember not having the answer to and having to figure out the answer. And I think if you are able to figure out the answer to at least one of these questions, you'll be in a better financial situation. So here we go, I'll rattle them off, but you can take a screenshot if you want. How much do you spend each month? Approximately how much will you spend next month? What percentage of your income are you saving? How much do you need for retirement? 
What percentage of your income do you contribute towards a retirement account? What are the expense ratios of any investments in your retirement accounts? What percentage of your income do you spend on rent? What recurring subscriptions do you have? How much debt do you have? What are the interest rates on the debt that you have? How much of your monthly income goes towards debt? Exactly what date will you be debt free? If you have debt, exactly how much are you paying each month in interest? How much money would you need to create a six month emergency fund? How much do you currently have in your emergency fund? Do you have a 529 plan or a Roth IRA set up for your children? Where do you want your finances to be in one year, two years, five years, 10 years from now? How much do you know about your spouse's financial situation? Just for some fun stats, 20% of Americans don't know the answer to this question. 34% of Americans don't know the answer to this question. And 27% of Americans either don't know when they'll be debt free or think that they'll never be debt free for the rest of their lives. Again, the goal with this quarantine activity is you just want to get a better picture of your financial health and gradually get to understand all of these things that you might not now have the answers to because ultimately your financial health is dependent on the past. So what did you spend last month? The present, what are you currently spending? What are, is your current financial picture like? And the future, when will you be debt free? What do you want your life to look like at retirement? How much money do you want to make next year? And you just want to have this whole complete picture of your financial health. But for now, to not get overwhelmed, just start with one of these questions that you don't currently have the answer to. Number 10 is to use this extra time that you have at home to cook more, to try a new recipe. Cooking at home as opposed to eating out is one of the quickest ways that you can save a lot of money and cut down on expenses. So I highly recommend using this time to try out a new recipe. If you're interested, I have this Thai curry soup that I make all the time that's delicious. So I've left the recipe down in the description below. And I'd actually love if you could drop a comment and leave me your favorite recipe so that I can try making that too. So those were the 10 ideas for how you can use this time that you have at home to be more productive, to improve your financial situation. I hope you're all staying healthy and happy and safe. And I'm going to see you in this video where I talk about how I'm going to actually build that $200,000 of passive income or this one where I talk about investing for beginners, especially given this volatile market.